we're going to get started. Um, hello, welcome, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, my name is Alice Bonner, and I'm the chair of the Moving Forward Nursing Home Quality Coalition. Uh, and this call today is to celebrate work that so many of you have done over the last year with our team. Uh, and I'll just briefly introduce, although you'll hear from them a little bit later, uh, Sumire Maki, who's with us today, and Isaac Longobardi, who's our director. Uh, Sumire is our program manager, and Isaac's our director of the program. So you may be familiar with them, but uh, we all welcome you heartily to this call. Um, I'm going to turn it over in a moment for a welcome from uh, Dr. Terry Fulmer from the John A. Hartford Foundation. But I just wanted to apologize very quickly if anyone got the wrong time. We had one little glitch. Most people got the right time for today. So thank you so much for persevering and joining the call. Um, as we said, it's a very diverse group. And we do encourage you all during the call today, please use the chat. Um, we really encourage you know to keep the conversation going, get your questions answered. We have a lot of coalition members and co-chairs on this call, um, so they may jump in and answer your questions if you chat them in. I see a lot of very familiar faces on here as well. So with that, uh, Terry, I'm going to turn it over to you as president and CEO of the John A. Hartford Foundation. And I know you have a number of colleagues from the foundation on with you as well. So please uh, give us a welcome. Thank you so much, Alice. And yes, I do have a number of colleagues on the uh, phone today. I saw Nancy and Marcus, and if my screen were mobile, I might even see more. But that's because we're so dedicated to this work. So I'm Terry Fulmer, the president of the John A. Hartford Foundation, uh, a national philanthropy based in New York City and a proud supporter of the Moving Forward Coalition. Like you, I'm very passionate about proving, improving nursing home care. And I know that each of you share that deep commitment to improving the quality of life and the quality of work for staff and residents. This is an exciting moment that reflects a real inflection point for change, real inflection point for change. We all experienced COVID and the devastation that it wrought on nursing home communities, exposing long known problems. The President's Coronavirus Commission Report, followed by the National Academy's groundbreaking and comprehensive report on what needs to happen to improve nursing homes, has given us a roadmap for change. However, uh, these type of reports are only as good as the action that follows. And the Moving Forward Coalition picked up the ball and ran with it to bring us to where we are today. My gratitude goes out to leading ages, Katie Sloan, who and her team for the amazing, amazing work they're doing. And the one and only Alice Bonner, who has led this effort and has dedicated her work to these issues, her life's work to these issues. The coalition has worked forcefully to develop teams that have generated action plans we're going to hear about today. Thank you to the Moving Forward Coalition Steering Committee and the Working Committees and the hundreds of individuals who've been involved alongside the Moving Forward team. We have all watched it so carefully and with so much admiration for your dedication. Because of this work, I have the utmost confidence that we'll move forward so that all nursing homes are person-centered and age-friendly. The John A. Hartford Foundation is committed to your success. Please remain engaged and help transform nursing homes for the people who live and work there and for all of us in this country. Thank you and back to you, Alice. Wonderful, thank you so much for that welcome, that was great. And uh, at this point, we are, I am going to pull up some slides to share with everybody. And, uh, you know, again, along the way, you'll also hear from some other folks who are part of the coalition. So, takes a minute for it to go from black to the title slide. And uh, again, you should, can you see the title slides, Mary? Yes, okay, great. So um, again, celebration of all the work that so many people on this call have done over the last year. And please, again, chime in in the chat, uh, things that you would like everybody to, to know about. You heard from Dr. Fulmer about the uh, generous funding we have from the John A. Hartford Foundation. Um, again, what we're going to do today is talk a little bit about what we did in year one, what all of you have done, uh, talk about the action plans and really focus on the nine action plans that are now on our website. You may have had a chance to look at them. They just got posted yesterday. Um, as we said, hearing from some of our members and then really going into a discussion and a Q&A session toward the end. So here's a couple of icebreaker questions for everybody on the call. 
for you to chat in. Um, how did you hear about the action plans? How did you hear about the Moving Forward Coalition? We would love to know that. Uh, we honestly don't know how a lot of people hear about us. Um, sometimes we go to conferences, we have publications, things like that. But tell us how you heard about the action plans and what is improving nursing home quality? Well, why is that important to all of us? Not just what we're doing, but why is it important um, in terms of moving ahead? So those are our two questions. And Isaac or Samari, if you wanna chat those in, that's, that's great too. Um, this volume looks familiar to many of us. Some of us sleep with it under our pillow or wake up to it first thing in the morning. But um, this is the NASM report uh, that we took and that we are tasked with using to develop priorities. And then we've written these action plans and now we're moving forward in year two. So again, everything ties back for us in a focused way to the recommendations in this very comprehensive report. So again, who's in the coalition? Many of you are in the coalition. If you've not signed up on our website yet, please do hit the, you know, contact us or connect with us buttons and you can sign up and then you'll get our monthly newsletter and other communications from us about events and so forth. But you know, we have a vast and really diverse group of organizations and individuals from all over the country who have joined advocates, nursing homes, CNAs, we have, uh, we probably are going to have a couple of CNAs on this call. Nursing home residents are on this call, quite a number of them. Uh, again, direct care and, and other staff, as well as people who, who own nursing homes. So um, a very diverse group. And what we're trying to do is to develop and test these action plans and where you'll see where we are on that trajectory um, and all focused on nursing home resident quality of life. This is not about specific diagnoses and medical care. This is about quality of life. We started without a vision and mission and we developed the vision and mission with all of you and lots of other partners. We, this was a public process. And again, you've seen this, it's on our website, in our materials, but truly the vision is that every nursing home will be a community in which lives are nurtured, residents are empowered, and where people want to work. And we're gonna get there by making vital changes in policy and practice through the power of bringing diverse voices together now. So, you know, we, we always go back to this. This is our, you know, this is the foundation for what we do and it's really important. So we'd love to know your thoughts about that. Um, so we're gonna give you a brief overview of year one. For some of you, you've seen these slides a number of times, but for other people who've joined the call, it may be new. So we did wanna just ground everybody in where we are. So these are the four phases of our work in year one. It's a little bit of a busy slide, but you heard us say we convened groups and then we had um, decisions made about co-chairs and members of those groups. Those groups then prioritized recommendations and then they wrote and developed these action plans. And now we're in phase four. So this is the time when we're going out and we're testing some of these action plans. We're working with policymakers, working with partner organizations, people who have not yet been part of the coalition, but now are ready to engage. And we're gonna talk more about what that looks like. So um, these are all ways that we're working in year four now that the action plans are posted. So, you know, who are these committees? You may say, I wonder who's on them. Well, first of all, you can go to our website and it lists all the committee co-chairs and all the members. Again, a number of them are on this call today and they're welcome and encouraged to speak up and um, at, at any point. But just so you can see the diversity here, we think this is important. So, you know, uh, the big blue circle there has a lot of the consultants or academic and think tank researcher types. We have professional association staff in the orange there, um, advocates and ombudsmen in the gray, et cetera. So what you can see is, you know, there are opportunities here, we think maybe to better balance the different roles and organizations. The resident is the light blue section there. I think we could use some more nursing home residents as part of the coalition, some more advocates. So again, love your thoughts on this because this is important. We knew starting out, it was gonna take us a bit of time to balance the you know, diverse and different groups that wanna participate. So we'd love your, your thoughts and ideas on that. 
And then what about the larger group, the, the coalition? Who's in this coalition? We have nearly a thousand people signed up as participants on the website already. And again, you can see research types, a lot of direct care staff, which we think is really important. If we're gonna succeed, we need nursing homes and nursing home direct care staff to be really engaged. The associations, advocates, um, you know, care partners and family members. There's a number of you on this call. I recognize a, a number of names. Um, and that's really important also because, you know, sometimes the voice of nursing home residents, they can speak for themselves and articulate what they care about. And you're gonna hear more about that in a minute. But it's also important that other people in the community have a voice and participate. And nursing homes have to be seen as leaders in communities. That's, that's one of our goals of the coalition. So who else is a part of this? Well, this is a super busy slide, needless to say, but these are all the organizations that have written to us and said, we want to be a supporting organization. We want our, our logo on your website. We care about this. We're meaningfully involved. We really wanna show that and demonstrate it. So just to give you an idea, and if you're not on here and your organization would like to be a supporting organization, please send us your information. You can email me, Sumire or Isaac, uh, and we'll make that happen. So um, now we're going to turn it over for a moment to one of our uh, wonderful steering committee members and colleagues, Dr. Barbara Bowers. Um, uh, Barb, we, she's just known as Barb to a lot of us, um, but she's been a longtime colleague and nursing professor, and she's led work over the last year tirelessly with nursing home residents and others around the country to bring the voice of nursing home residents forward. And um, she's compiled a, a really nice report of recommendations that um, a lot of people are gonna be surprised at some of the things that are in there and some people won't be. So um, Barb, if you want to unmute your, your line and- I, uh, Yep, I'm unmuted, I think. You are, I can hear you, go ahead, please. Yes. Okay, great. Um, I will be brief, but I think this was actually really important, and I say a lot, a lot of fun. And there are, um, I believe, three residents from our focus group who are on this call. I see three of you: um, Cindy Napolitan, uh, Frank Dornfurst, and Marguerite Gucci's. I hope I didn't miss anyone. They've been unbelievable. So yeah, just give you a quick overview of what we did. We decided early on that one of the most important things we could do is to make sure that the residents' voices were strongly reflected in all of the decisions we made. So we made a commitment, which was, um, I have to say, challenging, but it, it worked out really well, which was to find out what the committee, each of the committees was planning to discuss so that we could get resident voices involved before decisions were made, as opposed to here's what we've decided, what's your reaction? We didn't wanna do that. Um, so we worked really hard to, to get the committee, each of the committee co-chairs to send us information about things they were discussing that, that we wanted resident feedback into. And so we did a lot of that. Um, since then, the residents have also responded, reacted, get provided feedback on measures, on questions, on language that's going to be used, and things that are being developed by the committees. So a lot of this is invisible. You don't see it in the finished product, but the resident voices informed everything along the way. Um, we talked to a total of over 70 residents. I don't have the final count. But in addition to that, in individual interviews primarily and focus groups, we had um, seven really engaged residents, three of whom you've just met on the call, who have been meeting um, I, at least once a month since the beginning of this project. And the last I heard from one of them was sort of what's the plans for the next years to come. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what's going on there. But they have been very engaged, provided a lot of feedback in addition to the residents on each of the committee, which has been really important. Um, I just wanted to, to fin oh, two, th two things we did. We said, what's important to you? Rather than saying, here's what we think is important, would you like to respond? We started off each of these focus groups and individual interviews by saying, you tell us what's important. What should we be worried about? What should we be concerned about? Um, here's some general areas in the NASM report. Are those important or not? And so that was, I think, a vital thing to do. Um, and fortunately, they aligned very nicely with what the committees were kind of zeroing in on. But I, there's no question, and I've heard from a number of committee 
co-chairs about the importance and the real impact that the resident comments have, have made on what they've done. So I would take summaries from our discussions and send them to the appropriate committee, often through Isaac, who I think did a lot of this. Um, I would send him all sorts of information, things that the committee, things that the residents had said, and he would decide which committee was weak because he had a, a good view of what they were working on and would send them out strategically. And so it's, I've been delighted to see in a crosswalk we've done that I would say, I don't have numbers for sure, but I guess about 80% of, of what the residents recommended show up in the action plans. And the, the last thing I wanna say is we didn't just say what's wrong. Um, we all know there's lots of things wrong, uh, but made a real effort to say, okay, these are the issues. Now, what do you recommend? What should we do about it? And they were not the least bit shy in telling us. And they had, I think, incredible insights, remarkable recommendations. Many cost nothing. Um, some have price tags and they're important and there are things that we need to work on. But many of them were pretty simple, straightforward things that we can do right now, which is what this group is really all about is what can we do now? Um, so more to come. Fabulous. Um, Barb, thank you so much. And I think everybody on this call can see how valuable and, and absolutely essential Barb's work has been. And from the beginning, we've said that what makes this coalition really special is we will always keep the voice of nursing home residents at the center of everything we do. And Barb has really made that happen. And we want to continue doing that. So again, we're going to say to everybody on this call, how can we do even more of this? How else can we do this and make sure we're continuing to bring that voice forward? Um, other ways that we've gotten public feedback, in addition to the really important resident feedback, is we've asked, you know, and we've posted online a form for people to submit their ideas. Uh, this was an example of a call. You can see Isaac here, and, you know, we have someone who works as a CNA a couple of nursing home, former nursing home residents, care partners and family members, et cetera. So getting public feedback about our vision, our mission, what we're doing, how to make the action plans feasible and practical, it has been a lot of our work. So you might be saying to yourself, what is an action plan? And we wanna give a little bit more detail about this and take a moment to actually walk you through what they look like and what you'll see when you go to the website. So it started, if you remember our little trajectory of the journey over the last year, it started with taking those report recommendations from the NASM report and, you know, first using a template and tools to come up with priorities. So using a very structured system and looking at these four values that you see in the boxes on the left part of the slide here, all of the committees were looking at equity principles, how to make these plans sustainable, the feasibility of the plans, and you know, collaboration in different ways. And so from that work came these priorities. You may have seen them, they've been posted on our website for several months. Um, and it was these priorities that then drove us into the next phase of work, which has been um, developing the action plans. And you know, when we say develop the action plans, this, these are pictures of some of the committee calls where these are co-chairs and committee members who've been talking about these boxes that you see on the right hand part of the slide. So you know, they've talked about what do we need to do with the emerging research? Do we wanna do a, um, do we wanna do a literature review? Um, where do we need to get other partners involved? Who's, who's missing? Who should be here? Who's not here? Um, Collaboration across committees, we'll say more about that in a moment, because as you'll see, the integration of the action plans as a set, a complete package has been a big part of our work and many of you've been involved with that as well. And then looking at really what matters, why, why are we doing this work? So here are the nine action plans. Um, this is, you know, this is a, a graphic showing all nine of them. And again, we won't have time today to go through all nine, but we do wanna go through examples of three of them. So the first thing is, how do you read an action plan? And what you see here is, this is the link to get to our taking action page of our website. So if you go to this link, it'll take you right there. You can also, as you probably know by now, uh, you can Google moving forward coalition and it'll pop right up and then you can click to go to the taking action page. So this is what that page looks like when you first land there. 
And from there, you scroll down and you see each of the action plans. There's a little icon on the left and you can you know, click on the hyperlink. There's also a compiled document with all of the action plans in one document. So if you're the kind of person who wants to read one 87 page document, it's there. Um, but you can also click on the nine uh, in action plans, each of them individually. So this is what they all look like. There's a front page um, with a summary in this box with the bright pink purple outline. And then it ties you right away to the NASM recommendations so that you can see how these action plans relate back to the recommendations in the report. They're not exactly the same, but the, the recommendations that are closest to what the committees have put into the action plans. And then the next section is the purpose section, and that's usually about a page. And at the bottom, again, in a bright pink outlined box is the goal or goals that go with that action plan. So that you can see from the very beginning, this is what the action plan is driving toward. We know from the work that we've done together over the last year that we've said from the very beginning, we are an action oriented group. We're not designing big research studies that are gonna take five or 10 years, that's not who we are. So in order to demonstrate that we really thought about the feasibility and thought about the practicality, each of the committees has included a timeline, proposed timeline. So some of these dates may change as they start their work, but for the most part that they've thought through the time that's gonna be involved and needed for each of the phases of the work. And then there's sections that are important. One is on equity because we have threaded equity throughout all of the committee work. And this is a really important point. We have sought out um, experts and advisors and people from around the country who really have expertise in diversity, equity, and inclusion. I know Tara McMullen is on this call. She's um, leading and co-leading a group that um, is working on diversity, equity, and inclusion within the coalition. Um, so it is an important point that we wanted to just make sure we emphasize to you all today that we can always do more. And this is an area where we would say in year two, we want to do more with diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we'd appreciate your thoughts on that. Um, and then finally, a section on sustainability, which of course is critical, and funding. And we would just say some of the committees have more information and have been able to get more, uh, more data on potential funding sources and others are still doing that work. So we wanna be really clear in, in the early part of year two, there is a need for us to continue to look for opportunities to fund some of the initiatives that you see in the action plans. We can do that, we are doing it, um, but again, it's part of our work right now. So, okay, so let's briefly talk about three of the action plans just to give you an example of what it feels like to read through them and think about them. So this is an example of an action plan that is focused, we would say, on practice, nursing home practice. This is about person-centeredness and goals, priorities, and preferences, which we sometimes call GPP for short, um, in the nursing home. So it turns out that when people are admitted to the nursing home, there's an opportunity there for nursing home staff uh, to work with a new resident, someone who's come to live in that nursing home, and ask them about their goals, priorities, and preferences to take that information and document it, make sure it gets put into the care plan during the care planning process, and then making sure that if it's in the care plan, that the people who are delivering the care, direct care workers, such as certified nursing assistants and others, actually know what's in the care plan and include it when care is delivered. So a somewhat complicated, but not really that complicated process, but one that has required a number of the committees to work together. So I know on the call today, I saw at least in the beginning of the call, we had uh, Mary, Mary Lou Chialfi, who is um, co-leading one of the work groups on person-centeredness, uh, Tara McMullen, who is uh, co-leading the Committee on Quality Improvement and Measurement, and uh, Rick Gamash, who, I'm sorry, not Rick, but um, I don't think we have anybody from the uh, Health Information Technology Committee, but um, Terry O'Malley and Greg Alexander co-chair that committee, and those members are very involved in this process too. So three different committees working together, integrating across all of this, and the technology piece, by the way, is that they're 
looking at developing a tech enabled way to capture the information from residents um, so that the residents and a care partner could work together on that. Uh, and the other part of this is, is doing it with the staff. So again, AD Vault and Columbia are providing some in-kind resources. And, and I know Maria Mullen's on the call today um, in terms of some data that they're reviewing um, to get to uh, the next steps of the action plan. But illustrating, I think, integration among committees, integration among the different aspects of the plan and a plan focused on practice. The second example we wanted to share with you is a plan that's actually focused on policy. So this has to do with financing smaller homes or household models. Um, and that involves very often conversion of older buildings um, into, uh, into new or modified structures in order to be able to support the care delivery models that we see with smaller homes. Um, this group, which is committee number four, that's where I was gonna point out Rick Gamash is on the phone uh, and he may wanna speak up uh, later on on the call, but, um, but Rick and uh, the co-chairs of this group, Mark Cohen and David Grabowski, along with Isaac and others have really been thoughtful and have done a lot of work with housing and urban development, with HMAC, which is a lender group and other organizations to really figure out what would an incentive program look like that would support better or more funding to be able to do some of these conversions um, because there's been a lot, of, a lot of focus on smaller homes and household models and making nursing homes more person-centered, you know, thinking about dignity and you know, privacy and all of those uh, important uh, fundamental qualities that we wanna see. So this is an example, and there's a few other things in here too, like convening a round table of federal agencies, agencies that don't normally work together. So again, a policy approach, and this slide is to show you in addition to that action plan, some of the other action plans also involve work with state and federal policymakers and agencies. So these are the logos of all the different organizations we've already connected with to some degree and have had conversations with um, and are they are involved going forward. By the way, you know, we sent out a blast email, you know, because you probably received it yesterday about the action plans. And a lot of individuals from these organizations, CDC, CMS, um, the QIOs, they've already gotten back to us. So we think that's a positive sign. And then the third example is a workforce action plan. So there are two action plans that are really specific to workforce. And we know from talking to so many of you that, you know, one specific aspect of the workforce that's critical in nursing homes is certified nursing assistants. Many of us on this call started out as a CNA, um, and there's a lot of people out there who really need more support in various ways. So this action plan focuses on working with states, state governments, and other organizations such as QIN, QIOs, uh, and professional associations to figure out how can a particular state enhance whatever they're doing around CNA career pathways? How can they get more people into the pipeline? How can they do more with retention? How can they do it through registered apprenticeship programs? Or how can they do it outside of those programs? So, you know, just making connections so that states have the information they need and want to be able to start or further develop some of these programs. So again, we've had lots of interest from a number of states and are working with them. So that's the examples that we gave you today of practice, policy, and workforce action plans. And we hope that you'll take a look at all nine of the plans that are there. So um, you may be saying to yourself, so how can I engage further with um, the coalition and with um, other people who are working on these action plans? We hope that we've, we've sparked your interest so far on the call. And uh, before I turn it over to Sumere, I will just say, if you happen to live in Pennsylvania or Michigan, and I know we have Michelle Mokia from Michigan on this call, maybe we have Nancy or somebody from Pennsylvania, um, we have two specific state-based teams that are just forming now. Uh, these are teams that are just coming together, just developing membership, figuring out their structure and how they're gonna operate um, there. So that, you know, again, they've had maybe one call so far, but in these states, the effort is to have people like all of you who wanna do something at the local level in your own city or town and the nursing homes in your city and town and work really closely together. 
that's what these teams are designed to do, create a leadership structure for the entire state to support that kind of local work, taking national moving forward work and bringing it down you know, to the, to the state level. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Samaria, who's gonna say a few more words about the important ways that you can get more involved. Uh, so Samaria. Thank you, Alice. Hi, everyone. My name is Samiri Mackey. I'm the project manager on the Moving Forward Coalition team working alongside Alice and Isaac. And I'm excited to share a little bit more about how you can engage with these action plans now that uh, you've heard a little bit more about what they are and what they look like. So first off, if you haven't had the chance yet, please do take a look at the uh, action plans. They're posted on our website. Um, I'm gonna chat that link in once more if you haven't had the chance to take a look at that yet. And after you take a look at the action plans, one or two or a few may catch your eye and you may wanna learn more about uh, the action plans or you may wanna learn more about how to engage in them. And you'll actually have an opportunity to do that um, with the individuals who wrote the action plans and who work closely with the action plans um, by, uh, by joining one of our upcoming coalition conversations, uh, which are our webinars, just like this one. And we'll be hosting um, a coalition conversation webinar for each of the nine action plans for the next couple of weeks, um, starting next week. So to register for these webinars, um, do take a look at our calendar of events um, on our website, which we will also chat in. To stay updated with all the latest news um, from us and to receive reminders from um, us about all these upcoming events, um, please join our newsletter. Uh, we will chat in the link to do so in a second. Um, I saw that some folks have already signed up during this call, thank you. Um, and for those who are already receiving our newsletter, we'll be sharing more communication resources um, like a social media kit, um, an email template to help us spread the word about the action plans. Alice, if you go to the next slide, here's um, just a screenshot from one of our coalition conversation webinars in the past. We usually have a very diverse of folks um, discussing topics related to the coalition. Um, and as mentioned, uh, our next nine webinars will be focusing on our nine action plans. Um, and if you'd like to take a look at some of our previous coalition conversations, they are available on our YouTube channel, which I will also chat in. And if you go to the next slide, um, Here's what our newsletter looks like. And if you go to the next slide, this is where, this is what our LinkedIn page looks like. And we'll also be chatting that in and following up um, with all this information after the call um, over an email as well. And with that, Alice, I will pass it back to you. Thank you, Sumire. So uh, great that people are signing up. We're, we're super excited about that. Thank you. Um, so just the last couple of slides before we turn it uh, back for our conversation. Um, you know, we've already talked about pretty much all of these things on the slide in terms of year two, which began on July 1st. Um, so we're, we've rolled up our sleeves yet again, and we are out there, you are out there doing this work every day, every week. Um, and, you know, we're going to be doing more with program evaluation in year two as well. Um, in terms of, you know, we, we like to say the sky's the limit because, uh, you know, we want to keep thinking broadly and deeply about these issues. We want to keep innovating. And really important, I think, is the second bullet here. How can we empower nursing homes even more to lead in communities, to be seen as part of communities, to not be an afterthought? Um, there's basic, basic work that we still really need to do. And some of us Myself and many people on this call who I know have been doing this for, you know, 40 years. So we, we, we cannot give up and we will not turn back. We are not turning back. We are moving forward. That's why it's in our name. We're going to keep going. So um, we want to share one more slide that has a little sh very short uh, video uh, with one of our wonderful steering committee members, uh, Jeanette Sullivan Martinez, and she has a little bit to share with us. So hear from Jeanette. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody that has worked so hard. Um, when I read the action plans, one of the comments I made to Alice was that it's very evident that it's very well educated. People that have really collaborated well together have put their thoughts together in a very meaningful way. Um, and I really appreciate it because you get the sense that people are playing well with others. And I think you know what I mean by that. It's not about their own agenda. The agenda is making life better for people like myself that live in nursing homes. 
And that really is the overall goal for all of this. And I really see the potential. I'm very excited. Granted, there's funding and there's lots of questions that still need to be answered, but we're only our first year in and I feel like we've already made progress. Just the fact that the number of people that can get together and work together and see an outcome that is doable um, is very, very exciting for me. And personally, I am very honored and feel um, very happy to be participating in this, in the conversation. I feel like each time I'm in a meeting, I learn something new, which just not only benefits me, but also benefits the other people living in my home as their resident council president. I can bring things out and ask them questions. Uh, one thing I just did real quickly, I'll tell you, I did a happy survey. Let's find out if our residents are happy. And if they're not, how do we fix that? And I think if we look at life that way, talk to people, communicating is key, collaboration is key, and I really see that we have the means to make this work. So thank you for letting me be a part, and definitely thank you all for all your hard work. It's very evident so far. Cannot imagine anyone saying it better than that. Um, so with that, um, we are going to uh, take down the slides. We're going to have discussion, and then we'll do a wrap-up and next steps. But Sumeri and Isaac, if you have, um, while I'm taking down the slides, if you have anything in the chat that you want to share or any comments that you guys want to add to what we just went through in that presentation, um, please go ahead. I, I saw two comments. Uh, you you might address Alice um, from from folks. I guess their questions. One is from from Jay Sackman, are there any provider organizations, not for profit or for profit that are embracing these goals? Um, and the other um, was about uh, opportunities for um, for uh, uh, family members, uh, resident representatives, um, advocate voices, um, and ombudsman to get involved. So share, sharing about how those two groups are engaged and can continue to be engaged. Um, great questions. Thank you for those. And um, there are a few people on the call who may want to uh, speak up to the first question. So I see Angie Hunt is on from state of Maine. And uh, I know that she um, is, you know, part of a nursing home organization. Um, sorry for calling on you, Angie, but if you're in a place where you can unmute and want to say anything about uh, nursing homes getting involved in any of the action plans, um, do you have anything to share with the group? Um, yeah, yes, I mean, at the Cedars, um, we've been very involved in, um, you know, age friendly, um, and that's a very person centric uh, program that um, um, has the medical part of it. Um, but also to um, uh, the Cedars has been involved in being more person centric and, in, 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 um including some of the goals like doing all those life stories, um, and really getting to know the residents and really getting the staff to um, really develop relationships um, with the residents and really getting to know them that way. Um, uh, but, um, and, and, and participating, we participate in our coalition for dementia care and all those things to um, help um, us be more person-centric. I'm sorry, I wasn't at the beginning of the call. I came in a little later, so I didn't really see all the goals to specifically comment on them those were, those were great comments angie and um it's a good you brought up a great example actually of how different initiatives can intersect and build on one another so angie and her team at cedars have been very involved in age-friendly health systems as a nursing home and so that's why she's you know uh, you know talking about that in particular so thanks thanks for mentioning that i also see i see cindy froning is on from nadana and Cindy, I don't, uh, I don't know if you have anything to say in terms of your your membership, your members who are nursing home directors of nursing. Um, any thoughts that you would want to share with the group about um, any of those nursing homes? You know, I think we have a, a few that are are on the coalition and certainly um, are striving to reach the goals that that you've set and that they're working on. I. I think they're all energetic. They're all appreciative of the movement. Um, certainly there are still barriers out there. There are still concerns um, that we are 
facing with staffing issues and things, but I think for the most part, they see this as a, as a good step for them okay. and for our residents. Thank you. Thank you very much. That, that was very helpful. And again, I think people on this call know that Nadana is a, a national association that's been very involved, not only with our work, but also with H Friendly and, and all of that. Um, I do think it's important to also stress we have many nursing homes that are on our working committees that are part of our uh, steering committee. So we have both professional associations of nursing homes and individual nursing homes, both for-profit and not-for-profit. And when we started this work, um, we all said to one another, you know, this is only going to go somewhere if we have nursing homes engage with us. So we, so we know it's important and we need to make a case that they can, that, you know, we're articulating in a way that can be easily understood and that makes sense. It's a really compelling case. So I think these are great questions. One more person about the nursing homes, then we'll talk about the advocates. So um, Linda Kluge uh, from Alliant Health, which is one of our QIN QIO partners. Linda, do you wanna say anything about the nursing homes that, that you all work with in terms of how you see them potentially being interested in, in any of this work? You know, Alice, thank you for that opportunity. And I think our Culture Change Network of Georgia is hoping to have you get, give us a, a, a cheerleading primer at our coming up meeting in August, because we really want to adopt a state kind of way that we can carry forward in Georgia. But I will tell you for the QIO, uh, all over the country, all of us can embrace this. This is something we know fits right in with our CMS work. It fits right in with the right thing that we need to be doing every day. So wonderful. We're going to pour over those action plans and we thank you for that work. Well, thank you very much. And we've, we've got a lot to do, but we have a, a number of QIN QIO colleagues on this call and we've spoken to all 14 of the QIN QIOs and uh, they are very interested in, in working with us. Another organization, um, national you know, group of organizations um, that's been very involved with us is the Long-Term Care Ombudsman Programs, uh, you know, local, state, and federal programs around the country. And I do see um, Peg Barajas is on the call. And Peg, I don't know if you, you know, want to say anything in terms of the second question that Isaac posed to us about you know, um, long-term care ombudsman work, obviously primarily with nursing home residents. That's, you know, that's their, their job is to represent the residents, but also in terms of advocates or family members as well. Is there anything you'd like to add about um, engaging those, those, those groups? Hi, Alice. Hi, everybody. Um, what a wonderful group you have assembled here. And yes, thank you for that nod. Um, as as the, the state long-term care ombudsman here in Pennsylvania, and I've got a, a number of our state office team here as well, we're, we're very excited about, uh, about this, this movement. We're very excited about the, the partners that you've pulled together. And I'm particularly interested in how we might be able to continue these conversations where we can wed those who are coming at it from a provider and even a clinical side to those of us who really want to focus on their residents and how to build community and quality of life for those individuals. I'm so happy to see some residents here. Thank you. Um, our work would not be possible if it were not for your courage and communicating your needs and, and your desires and where our systems fall short for you. And uh, please count Pennsylvania in on any and all of the initiatives you're working on, family focused, resident focused, resident right focused, quality of life. So thanks, Alice, for pulling everybody together here today. Well, thank you. That, that was great, Peg. And I, I know that there's a lot of, of work going on in Pennsylvania, as we said. Um, there's many other people uh, on this call who do represent advocacy organizations. I see uh, Senator Dick Moore from Massachusetts and the Dignity Alliance of Massachusetts is on. Um, other people from other, you know, long-term care ombudsman programs, individual people who've had a family member or their own personal experience um, with a nursing home and want to engage and want to work on improving quality and want, want to be involved. And uh, again, I don't think we can stress this too much. Uh, the involvement of nursing home residents and advocates 
is absolutely critical to this work and it's going to continue to be uh, very important for us to still develop it and add to it even more in year two. So I don't know if there's anybody else who would like to specifically address that, um, jump in and say anything more about that. But we do have a, a nursing home resident who's on our steering committee. You heard from her, Jeanette Sullivan Martinez. She was on the call for a while. She may still be on. Um, and we have uh, the Consumer Voice is an advocacy organization. They are, uh, Lori Smetanka is on our steering committee as well. And many of the working committees, almost all of them have either a member who is an advocate, a family member, a nursing home resident, or people who are involved in some capacity with that work group, giving feedback and things like that. So um, anybody else wanna speak up? If you wanna unmute yourself and, and speak up to the group, um, please feel free. I see uh, Cody Kirk is asking to unmute. Sorry, that was an accident. <laughs> Would you like apologies. to anything anyway? <laughs> oh, no, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, Carrie, uh, Carrie chatted in that she'd like to also help the committees as we're moving forward, and we would love that. So thank you, Carrie. Carrie, you're one of those people who regularly emails us with ideas, and, and we, we need that. We, we need and uh, really value that as we go forward. Um, I just want to ask any of our committee members who'd like to chime in here. I know... Um, Rick is Rick Amash is on the call. I see Kathy Bradley, David Wolf, Doug Pace, who's one of our co-chairs. Anything you guys would add to what uh, we have talked about so far today? And you can speak, if you'd like, to any of the action plans that you're involved with, if you want to say anything more about them. I'm happy to uh, jump in, Alice. Um, First, uh, just following up a little bit on uh, Jay's question, Aldersbridge Communities in Rhode Island is is also very involved in um, resident-directed care and has had residents and staff members on the Moving Forward committees, as well as involvement in um, other organizations, as Alice said, that, that um, the overlap uh, were active in the Live Oak Project and uh, we've been active in the Eden Alternative and, and others, um, all uh, culture change organizations. And, and I, I'm on committee four, which is really about uh, finding a new way to pay for long-term care in the United States. Easy, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and as we worked through and broke it down, you know, what we found was maybe the lowest hanging fruit, <laughs> maybe, was to work with HUD and, and to try to get the criteria changed so that when they guaranteed loans to nursing homes and assisted living, that they prioritize in some way those organizations that want to convert from shared rooms to private rooms or build small houses. So household models, small houses, something like that. And and I think, you know, although we're hopeful and cautiously optimistic that we'll um, have success in this area. I think for all of us on that committee and probably all of us on this call, we know that what we're doing is just one small piece of uh, what we need to change because this whole system is broken, right? We all know that. And um, I've been working in it for 42 years. And, and um, to change just the way it's paid for, where people have to become impoverished to go on Medicaid and, and where um, organizations like mine and not-for-profit are tremendously underfunded and can't afford to do the things that uh, our residents deserve. So we're, it's really a generational change. It's going to take longer than two years. And I plead with people and organizations and John Hartford Foundation and others to continue this, that, that this, this is just a start. And uh, we've got so much more to accomplish. 
Well, thank you. And Rick, you've been uh, absolutely one of the champions of this work since, you know, we first connected almost a year ago in Rhode Island at the leading age meeting there. So, you know, we thank you for all that. And yes, we do have a lot more to do for sure, but we're doing it. And that's, you know, every day we got to get up and, and just say we're, you know, we're here. We know the issues. We're going to move forward. Um, I wanted to just respond. I responded in the chat to Shannon, but I would say if anybody is interested in being on a committee or being a member of a committee or doing other work related to the action plans, because there is work related to the action plans that doesn't necessarily require you joining a committee. Um, we would love to put you in touch with the people who are leading the action plan. So, you know, send Isaac, Sumiri, or me, send us your contact information or sign up on the website and just tell us what you'd like to do and what your skills are, a little bit about yourself easy to do and we'd love to, to do that. Some of the committees are you know, starting to do that. Um, Frank, sorry, we're losing your battery, but we're so glad that you joined. I was just about to turn it over to either, to see if Frank or Cindy Napolitan or um, any of the other nursing home residents who are on with us today, um, besides Jeanette, since Jeanette, we already heard from you, um, but we always like hearing from you. Um, but Cindy or, um, uh, uh, Marguerite, uh, anybody, uh, would you guys like to make a few comments before, as we wrap up here? Hi, um, this is Cindy. Um, I am so excited to be involved in this. Um, it gives me hope. Um, I've lived in nursing home for five and a half years. Um, my beautiful daughter lives with me. Um, as a mother, it's my greatest fear that I should leave her and leave her to battle these issues on her own. So I'm so lucky that I am involved in this. And I believe that I'm teaching her how to advocate for herself and for others around her also. And I have great hope that there will be change in long-term care. And I just wanna thank everyone for all of their assistance and all of their care for long-term care residents um, because it is greatly needed. And um, my heart goes out to y'all. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Cindy. And you, you're getting kudos in the chat from Tara who says your advocacy and voice is so much appreciated and we just really thank you for that. Um, Marguerite, I don't know if you had anything you'd like to say to everybody. I do. Um, I think it is very um, exciting that these action plans seem to be uh, going in a direction where we might have actual results uh, from all our efforts. Um, I also would like to um, thank everybody for their input and I'm very pleased that as a resident, um, the Moving Forward Coalition respects and cherishes what we do and what we have to say. So thank you for that. Respects and cherishes, that goes right here. Thank you for saying that. That's awesome. And we, we strive for those things and we will continue to strive for them. So um, again, Isaac, Sumire, anything you guys would like to add as we um, close here, and I'm, I'm just looking to make sure we haven't missed anybody who would like to um, like to speak before I turn it over to turn it back over to Dr. Fulmer um, for see if she's got a few closing remarks. But Isaac, Sumeri, anything we wanted to just make sure to reinforce Sumeri from your section about how to join LinkedIn and all those good things. <laughs> I mean, as mentioned, we'll, we'll be sharing a lot of this information um, over an email after this call, but just thank you again for everyone who's joined. And I'm, I'm excited to see what's, what's to come after these action plans. Isaac? Um, I, I would just encourage folks to uh, join the up, upcoming coalition conversations on, on the nine action plans. If you have one that you don't understand and want to understand better, or do understand and want to get involved in, that's really where we'll open up the conversation on those specific plans and would love uh, to have a really robust dialogue there um, with you all. Uh, please email us too. Um, we'd be happy to connect with you or your organization um, about the work. Um, and we're just 
extremely excited for a year to come of uh, implementation and impact. So thanks for being here. I think we should all have a round of virtual applause for the Moving Forward Coalition team, yay. And to say that uh, this is such serious and important work. And Alice, you make it look like it was easy. I know boots on the ground working with 800 people is very challenging. And kudos to you and Isaac and Tamari and the entire team and special gratitude to the nursing home residents who joined us today. And with that, back to you, Alice. I just can't say it better than that, I guess, but I just, I was gonna, you know, thanks to Mary and Isaac for their tireless work on this. You have no idea how much goes into this, but it sounds like maybe you do. Um, but we're doing this because we all care about, everybody on this call cares about this. And yes, there's gonna be challenges and we know that. And yes, you know, some of it will involve policy and funding and we're up for it. That's why we're here. So. Again, um, thank you all for everything you've contributed so far. Keep, keep those sleeves rolled up. Um, you're gonna keep hearing more from us. Please you know, do join the upcoming coalition conversations and email us. We get, we get lots of email, we love your emails. Just send us your ideas, tell us how we can do things better. Um, it's an ongoing process, but um, much to come in the year ahead and we're just very grateful. So see you all on the next call. Thanks very much.